Good evening, everybody. Well, let me do that one more time. I like that. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. I know it's our first Christmas program in two years, so we, we thank God that we're able to come in here tonight. And uh, we have been praying for safety, um, good health, and all those things to make sure that everyone is safe uh, coming into our environment. Um, so I want to uh, just make a couple of announcements before I pray and before I turn it over to the choir and the band. Uh, one of the first things is, uh, is this. Monday is the end of our food drive donation uh, collection. And what we're collecting donations for, which is food, clothing, uh, toiletries, and things like that, is for the Christian Community Center downtown on Holland Street and the Baltimore Rescue Mission. Uh, we decided this year to try to raise en enough items for Christmas bags for both of the, uh, um, the community centers and so that we could show, that, you know, that we're thinking about them. We know that it's a tough time for many, and when we look at our homeless population, it seems to be growing and not shrinking. So we want to make sure we do our part as servants of the Most High God. Um, the next thing is uh, our playground. I don't know if uh, all of you have had a chance to see our new playground. That's going to be completely uh, completed uh, in January. We're just waiting for the fence to come in. We had to order, and it was on back order uh, with all the other things in life that are on back order now. But uh, that will be completed in January. And if you haven't seen it, take a look at it. I've done a few flips on it already. It's good to go, and uh, I think it's safe for our students. Amen. All right. Uh, the next thing is for our uh, previous fundraiser when we raised $40,000 uh, to replace all the computers in our computer labs. Uh, we're in the process of making that purchase, so we want to thank you again for that. And the last item that I'm going to bring up tonight is our annex. I don't know if any of you know that the annex is that little building right uh, behind the business office. Uh, for the past two months, we've been gutting it out and refurbishing it. That's going to be our new kindergarten um, class uh, schoolhouse. I'll call it the little schoolhouse. Uh, our K-3 students will be in there, K-4 and K-5. So they'll have their own building, bathroom, everything in there for them. So we thank God for that as well. And that may be... That will most likely be completed in a couple of months. So we thank God again for that. And the last thing is pick up tonight. Um, at the end of the program, after Pastor Campbell speaks, I will come back up and tell you what we're going to do as far as pick up. We're going to try to make sure we get everybody out of here quickly and safely, all right? So be very patient with us. I said very patient. Didn't say patient. Be very patient with us. We are moving students and people, so help us get that uh, right tonight so everybody can get home safely. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Prayer position. Thank you, Lord. Great and mighty God, we come before you tonight to thank you for this opportunity, Lord God, to lift up the name of Jesus.
For your word says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And Lord, tonight we come to lift up the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you so much for what you're doing here at Arlington Baptist School. And Lord, we thank you for our students. We thank you for the hard work that they have uh, contributed to this concert tonight. We thank you for our staff, oh God, for putting the work in as well. And Lord, most of all, we do thank you for our parents, Lord God, for helping and assisting us in this process. In Jesus' precious name, bless uh, our concert tonight, Lord God. And I pray that you will be glorified above all. In Jesus' precious name, I also pray for that lost soul that may be sitting here tonight. I pray that you would use this concert, Lord God, to move their heart to call you Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we do pray and ask these things. Amen and amen.
Have you ever felt like Christmas wasn't fun? Maybe you haven't, but others have. Meet Mr. Felix. Mr. Felix had a rough childhood, but instead of me telling you, let's watch and see. You children are causing me much pain and frustration. This is the longest I've kept any orphans here. I think you guys are a bad bunch. Just my luck, I got a bad bunch. Do you just call us a bad bunch? No, why did you say that? You're gonna get us all in trouble. Why did you say that? No, I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. <sighs> oh my goodness, you're gonna get us all in trouble. All day long. We're gonna be punished. Man, you never know when to shut your mouth. Oh, stop being so scared. You're always afraid. He's not even thinking about you. I know, you're always so afraid. I only asked him a question. Yeah, it was only a question, but you know, when one of us gets in trouble, we all get in trouble. So why don't you just think before you ask the question? You guys keep on fussing and fighting. I'm gonna get out of here. I will not spend another Christmas in this orphanage. Oh my goodness! You're gonna get us all in trouble. I know it. If you leave, we all suffer. Yeah, and I don't be taking you with me. I'll just get caught. Anybody wanna leave with me? I need to know now. Except you, Andrew. Anybody but you. So, when are you leaving? I'm not telling you. You're just gonna tell on me like you always do. Maybe I might, maybe I might not. Guys, you hear that? I think he's coming back.
You know, Mr. Felix had a rough life. Why did my life have to be this way? I thought I could trust you, but you took my family. Mom and Dad, you left me here all alone. I cannot forgive you for that. Let's take a look and see what happened to Mr. Felix. Sometimes you never know what another person has gone through. This is April. Oh my goodness. No! No! Miss April, are you okay? What happened? There's more to the story. Make sure you pay close attention.
Just writing something. Just writing a song. Ooh, I love songs. What's this song about? It's about how God's blessings can sometimes come in unexpected ways. Oh my goodness, that's so deep. You know, Andrew, you're always so spiritual. I thank God for you. <sighs> Everything else is so excited. Yeah, you keep on writing your songs, and I'll keep thinking of ways of how to get out of here. All right, boys, you're with me for Bible lessons, and the girls are with Miss Patrick for English. Wait, before we start, can we ask you guys a question? Sure, as long as it doesn't take too long, because you guys only have classes today. We know how we feel about Christmas, but how do you guys feel about it? Well, Christmas is very special to me. We have a family tradition where we get a tree, we decorate it, and we also exchange gifts. But last but not least, we also read from the Bible, Luke chapter, chapter 2. Can I add to that? Because that's exactly how it was when I was a child. Except the holiday was my mom, but baked sweet potato pies. Okay, so we don't have a Christmas tree, and we don't eat your mom's sweet potato pies. Uh, can you actually quiet down? I actually really like this story. Aw, I wish we had that. I wish God would bless us with that. Who knows? Maybe he will one day. Look around. Good luck with that. <laughs> but we have to get back to work. Mr. Phillips is coming. Oh, so I guess you guys are afraid of him too? What are you guys doing up here? We're supposed to be learning. Learning. Charles, you know we raised you better than this. Charles, be nice to those kids. Leave me alone. Uh, Mr. Phillips, are you talking to someone? No. No. Teach. Teach. This is why kids can't learn anything these days because they're always playing around. Mr. Felix, I'm writing a song. And, and Mr. Felix, it's a really nice song too. Okay, let's get started now. We don't want to waste any more time. Mr. Felix, I'm praying for you. I really think God can change your heart. Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God. May I be like you. Have you allowed the Lord to change your heart? What are you waiting for? Let's see if Stephanie's prayers are going to be answered.
shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Save him, O God. In Jesus' name, amen.
But how do I do that? You've got to believe that he's the Savior, and he has to be the Lord of your life. Is, is that it? No. You must believe that he died for the world. He is the only begotten of the Father. Whoa. Wait, does that have to do with John 3.16? I know that by heart. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Yes, that's it. You must confess that you are a sinner in need of a savior. And Jesus is that savior. Well, you the know only what? one who can save you from your sins. Well, you know what? I believe it. I believe it, Lord. I give my life to you. Thank you, Lord. Now I pray that you will do the same to Mr. Felix. It's all Mr. Phillips' fault. He doesn't want us to celebrate Christmas. I bet something happened to him when he was a child. You watch too much TV. Man, we don't even got a TV. <laughs> hey, what's wrong with you? Oh, uh, nothing. I'm fine. Nothing. You guys want to play a joke on Mr. Felix? Yeah, sure. What kind of joke? Maybe we can do a Christmas joke or something. Hey, it's not nice to play jokes on people. Oh, right. I forgot. Your child in need Jesus. Hey, what's wrong with that? I'm praying for him. Hey, you know... Stephanie actually made a really beautiful song, and it really made me think. So now I guess you're supposed to be a Christian? You know what? Yes, I am. Guys, let's just go back to the joke on Mr. Felix. What are you guys up to? Oh, uh, n nothing. We're just minding our business. Uh, nothing. No, no. We were thinking of ways on how to lead you to Jesus. 
Everybody go to your room. I don't want to hear anything about Christmas. Mr. Felix. Child, I've told you, you are to listen and follow instructions. Go to your room like everyone else. But I have something to tell you, and I can't leave until I do. This might not be something you want to hear, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Child, I don't want to hear anything about your Jesus. I've been very disappointed with religion, so therefore I choose not to follow it. But it's not religion, sir. It's relationship, and Jesus wants a relationship with you. See, you don't understand. As a child, my parents were taken from me. Where was your Jesus? Every year I had to spend Christmas with different families. Some liked me, some didn't, and I didn't like them all either. But as life goes on, I had to live with it. But you don't have to live without him. He loves you. He never stops loving you, and he knows your pain. He knows my pain. He knows my suffering. The pain of a child. I don't think you understand, young lady. I may not understand, but I do know he loves you. I'm praying for you, Mr. Felix. You know, I almost gave my life to you, but I've decided I like it the way it is. Mr. Felix never dealt with his pain and his suffering. He lived the rest of his life with a broken heart. The Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What about you? My friends, I ask you the same exact question. Will you let your heart be a home for Christ tonight? I really and honestly hope that you make the right decision.
just a moment, our students will give one more song. I'm reminding as they were doing this tonight, tonight you've experienced from our students the greatest story in the world. There is no greater story than that. As I was thinking about that, if you'll remember the story when Joseph was deciding what to do with Mary, knowing she's with child, the word of God says, but while he thought on these things, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary to be thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. You probably know this verse. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from his sins. The reason I give that is because you think about this. Of all the things that Joseph was told that Jesus could do, you think he would raise the dead. And he did raise the dead, didn't he? Well, that'd be something to see. Could have said the blind will see. That would have been true. Could have said that the deaf will hear. That would have been true. Could have said that the lame would walk again. That would be true. Could have said that the leper would be healed. And that would be true. But the angel said of everything that you need to know about Jesus, you need to know this. He will save his people from their sins. Generations have come since Adam and Eve. And the same need is of every generation. You got to have a savior. Why? Because we got a sin problem. We do. In our church we have I don't know, about 20 different nationalities, first generation. Let me tell you something about every generation of every nation that's ever been, they have a sin problem. And the one thing mankind needed, then he needed more than the blind to see and the uh, deaf to hear and the lame to walk. What they needed more than anything else was someone to deal with their sins. And that's really what our students have told us tonight, haven't they? Right out of the Bible. Man, that play was exciting. I'm watching it, and I didn't, I didn't see it before. I purposely don't because I like to be surprised like you. I'm waiting on Mr. Felix to get saved. <laughs> don't worry, we'll work on Cameron later. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Felix. All right. But I like what was said at the very end there. What about you? If you came in here tonight thinking, well, I'm going to see a group of young people sing and, and do a play and play instruments. And by the way, they're good. But if you came in tonight and you thought, well, I'm just going to come and do my time and hear them and, uh, you know, excited about my kids or my grandkids or whoever it is. I will tell you this, whenever you come here, what we'll do is we will confront you with this. There is a Savior who can save you from your sins. That's the whole reason he came. At our school, we make no apologies about Jesus. Matter of fact, we love him. We love him. You know why we love him? Because there was a day when he saved me from my sins. I was five years old. And I'll never forget it to this day. I was seated in a church like this one on a Wednesday night, sitting with mom and dad in church, five years old, about, I don't know, seven, eight rows back. The invitation was given. I sat there and said, man, I better get saved. I came down the aisle and Mrs. Dillenball led me to the Lord. I've never got over it and never do I plan to. Why? Because I needed what Joseph was told, someone to save me from my sins. This church at Arlington your church where you attend, our national leaders, nobody can save you from your sins, only Jesus. And my, how he wants to do that. So tonight, you've been confronted with this. There is a Savior who wants to change your life. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes with me? I'm going to have a word of prayer in just a moment. Thank you for being so attentive. Thank you for being here. Perhaps tonight, though, you have come and said, boy, I need that. I need Jesus to save me from our sins. Fact of the matter is, we're all sinners. Every one of us. We have great students, but they're still sinners. We have great faculty, still sinners. Great parents, still sinners. 
Perhaps you're here tonight and say, I need a Savior. Would you trust Him tonight? Would you, with a bowed head and closed eyes, would you just pray something like this in your heart? Dear Lord, I know that I am a sinner. I have done wrong. But I know that Jesus is the Savior. Come to save me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. Change me. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. My trust is in you and you alone. Thank you, Jesus. Help me to live for you in Jesus' name. With our heads bowed and eyes closed, perhaps you're here tonight and say, Pastor Campbell, I just want you to know I've trusted Christ tonight. I prayed that. I would never embarrass you. I never would do that in a thousand years. But I do want to rejoice with you. So with our heads bowed and eyes closed, perhaps you're here tonight and you just slip your hand. I'm just saying, Pastor, I want you to know, I just prayed that tonight. Just where I can see it, that's all. Thank you for that. Someone else tonight, just pray for Pastor. I just want you to know I prayed that tonight. I prayed. I want you to know that. Thank you very much. Who else tonight? Just looking around quickly, not to embarrass you, just to rejoice with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless you. Most important decision you ever make in your life was that day you trust Christ. And so I rejoice with you tonight. You're a new creature. And if you meant that in your heart, as the verse was already given tonight, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Father, we have experienced something tremendous tonight. We have experienced through song, through a play, through music tonight, we have watched and listened to the story of the greatest story ever told. The story that Jesus came, that he came then and died for us, that he rose again, that he's coming again. We are great uh, acceptors of that tonight and thank you for what we've experienced. Thank you for Jesus coming to save our sins. I'm thankful for those that have trusted you tonight. I'm thankful for our students. May this Christmas be a great Christmas. May this be a Christmas that we rejoice in you more than ever before. You're a great God and we love you so much in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let me give you a few announcements. The students are going to come in just a moment. And uh, first of all, we're thrilled you came tonight. I know it's a big crowd here tonight, and I'd say we'd build a bigger auditorium, but we're not. And, uh, but anyways, it is, I want to say, these are only part of our students. I know you, you know that. Someone will be up here again in a moment. But let me say this about our students. Greatest students in the world right behind me. <laughs> Greatest students in the world. I know some of your parents say it's because they're like their parents. Yeah, all right. And let me say also tonight, I want to take a moment. I want to thank our faculty and staff, Mr. Whitehead. Let's thank our faculty and staff. <laughs> Victor, you want to come? Are you and Naomi? Where's Naomi? I'm right here. You hide? Come on down. Oh, you got a microphone? Got okay, a microphone. you're good right there. All right, go ahead. All right, so before we sing this last song, um, we just wanted to take um, some time and give a special thanks to Miss Joe and Miss Murray. Without them, this concert would not have happened, and so we just want to say thank you, Miss Joe, and thank you, Miss Murray, for giving us um, just this blessing, to be honest. Amen. Where's Miss Murray? Is she, she in the back? Bring her out here. She'd put the play together and did all that. Miss Joe did a great job. Obviously, the music was just amazing tonight. Yes. Miss Murray's our K-5 teacher. So that's probably what she's chasing kindergartner. Now she is. God bless you, Miss Murray. Thank you so much. Wonderful job with that. Great job. They're going to do one more song in a moment, then Mr. Whitehead will come. Let me say also thank you for the families. I do hope you have a great Christmas. This Sunday we have a celebration of Christmas here. If you have nowhere to be, be with us 11 o'clock um, this coming Sunday. And then also Christmas Eve we have a beautiful candlelight service we do here at the church, 6 p.m., uh, right here in the sanctuary. Everybody's welcome to come to any of those services. Also, uh, if you want to see this program later, I believe it'll be on the Facebook 
and um, on the YouTube channel for Arlington Baptist Church. So you can get on there, watch it later. Students, you can get on, see yourself on there. So make sure that you see that on there. Hope that'll be a blessing to you. All right? Students are going to come, and they're going to do another song. But God bless you. Hope you have a great Christmas. Right, if you can be seated, I will give the instructions for a pickup. All band students, make sure once you're with your parents, you stop by the cafeteria and get your instruments, all right? 